Hello, and welcome to the Bettendorf Public Library's Take Home Workshop. Today we're going to introduce you to bead weaving. Bead weaving is a craft that is used around the world, and that's why it's been chosen for one of our global gathering take home workshops. The ring that you'll be making today is in this style. These were all done, however, with the same kind of stitch, just using different beads or patterning the beads a little bit differently but you will be doing one similar to this. So let's take a look and see what's in our kits. Before I show you what's in your kit though, I'm going to tell you what you need. And you're gonna to need to supply a couple things is all. One, a dish or a plate or a bowl of some sort to hold the beads so they don't get away from you, and a pair of scissors. And the reason I'm showing you this, these first is because you need it for this. So you're going to find this in your kit, it's a plastic straw and you can tell it has the beads inside. On the outside is the thread that you'll be using for your bead weaving. This is called fire line and it is, it's a fishing line actually, but it's very fine, it's very strong, it tights, it makes really nice tight knots, so it's really good for bead weaving. Um, we're going to get our plate here, we're going to snip open the end of our straw and very carefully we're going to pour the contents out onto our plate. Make sure I get them all. So what you're going to find here first and foremost is your needle. So a bead weaving needle is a little bit different in that it's got some flexibility to it. It's not an extremely rigid needle. It doesn't have a real big eye, it's not very wide because it has to go through some pretty tiny holes. But that flexibility is what makes this a, a great needle for bead weaving. You're going to find obviously your beads. Now you're going to have two kinds of beads. You're going to have an, gold beads like this one here. And then you're going to have some colored beads. Now the colored beads will vary. These ones have kind of an iridescent finish on them might be different shades of brown. It might be a solid brown, which is what I used for this ring, but the gold beads are going to be this outer edge, and then all the rest of the beads will be what you do in the inside here. And then you'll see we've got one more big plastic bead. This is going to be called like an, an anchor bead or a stop bead, and um, it's obviously not part of your design, but we use that to keep the beads from running off. So that is what is in your kit. So we are going to go ahead and get started. To try and make this as easy for you to see as possible, I'm going to show you how to do bead weaving using a larger bead to start with. These beads are a size 11. This is what you have in your kit. It's a size 11 seed bead and they're beautiful but they're very small and I'll be honest with you, I had problems when I was learning how to do this kind of getting it straight in my head when I was just using these small beads. So we're going to do it first, I'm going to do it first, with these large perler beads. Now you do have one perler bead in your kit that you're going to use for a stop bead. For these demonstration purposes, we're going to do it all with perler beads, and then we'll go back and do it again with the pretty little size 11s. So to start with our stop bead, you just thread it through, Take it down almost to the end of your cord and go through it a couple more times, two or three times. Okay. All this bead does it's your, as your stop bead is it stops your other beads from running off your string. So we're going to take, and I'm actually going to tape that down to my surface. Um, you can't see that, it's off the, off the edge of where the camera is, but I'm going to tape that down so that it doesn't get too far away from me. Um, it, I found it helpful to start with it taped down and then as time goes, I lift the tape up. Then we're gonna have six beads. And for our demonstration, we're going to use um, green and yellow. 
and the yellow will take the place of our small gold ones on either end and then the green will take the place of these brown ones. So we're going to put six beads on, one yellow and then four greens and then the other yellow. And I'm just going to slide those on there. And that's your first row. So as you've probably intuited, when you're doing bead weaving, you're weaving it up and back and up and back. You don't go around the long way. You go top to bottom like this. So what we're going to do to start our second row, and after you've done your first row, every other row, column, I guess they would actually be, would be a better way to put it, is three beads. And everyone is always going to start with a yellow. So we'll pick up another yellow. And we'll put it on there. And we want it to be right side by side. That's your first one. And then without any bead on the string, we're going to go through this first one. This first green. Okay. Good. So we have two yellows and then one green. Now we're going to put another green right next to this green. So it's going to go two, one, two, one, two, one. So we'll pick up a green and we'll thread it on there. And see how it's going to go right next to that one. Then we'll go through with no bead on the string. We're going to go through the next screen. So again, we're sticking with our 2-1-2-1. Two, one, two, one. We're going to pick up another green. And it's going to go side by side with the next one. And then through our yellow. And you can see your pattern starting to form. So it's two, one, two, one, two, one, in and out, in and out. And now to come back the other way, we're going to do the exact same thing. But once you get these first two columns done, it gets much easier because now you can see the pattern. So we're going to pick up a yellow here. And then we're going to take our needle and run it through this bead that is sticking out. So where you've got the two, the one that's sticking out a little bit, just run it right through there. Now on the ends, you're always going to want to make sure that you pull that thread tightly. Nice and tight. Okay? So we went through there. So now, where this bead is recessed, we're going to pick up and put another bead right in there. So we're just going to pick up a green and slide it on there. And it's just going to snug right in there. And then it can go through this one, this one that's sticking out a little bit. And then we pick up another green. And it's going to snug right in there. And then we go through the yellow. Just like that. And we're going to keep doing that. Picking up a yellow, then putting a green here, a green here, picking up a yellow, green here, green here. So it's every other row we're building on for every column, and you're going to slot the new beads right into these spaces that are there for it. I've been weeding for a while and adding to my chain and you can see it's grown nicely and all of my beads are slotting in together. 
You do want to have uniform beads when you're doing um, peyote stitch with bead weaving, bead weaving because they are going to fit together like that and the more uniform your beads, the smoother your weave is going to be. So now I'm going to bring my ends together to show you how to form a ring out of this. You'll see that I have in my, in my top row here, that is a recessed bead and a recessed bead. So that actually is not going to work because what happens is when you bring these together on each row you have to have one recessed bead and one bead that's sticking out, a sticky outy bead if you will. So two recessed beads is not going to fit well together. So we're going to add one more row here. Just real quickly so that our ends will match up nicely. Okay, so now we have a recessed bead here and one that sticks out here, one that sticks out here, recessed here, and all the way down. So now when we bring these together, our beads that are sticking out are going to slot in nicely with the ones that are recessed on the other side. So to put these together, we're going to take our thread from where we left off weaving, we're going to bring it back around and we're going to run it through the beginning one in this bottom row here. And they're just going to snug them up against each other. Then I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth, picking up the beads that are not recessed, that are sticking out. So I'm going to go over here and pick up this bead. And then this one sticks out, so I'll pick this up. And it's every other row. So you're just zigzagging back and forth picking up every other row. Until you're back up at that top row. And then when you pull it tight, you'll see that now you just have basically that column. Now to finish this off, here is where your flexible needle really comes in handy. This bead was our first bead that we did. It has the thread coming up with the stop bead on it. We're going to set that aside. We're going to take our thread from the end. We're going to run it through our first bead and down through two more on a diagonal. Pull that through. Pull those tight and that really cements that that cone shape, that circular thing keeps it going. Now to knot it, we're going to run our needle underneath there and pick up one thread. Pull it through and then just tie a knot. Then we're going to do that two or three more times. So we want to just pull them through and tie a knot. And we pull it tight enough so that those threads will go down in between the beads and you won't even be able to see these knots. Now, honestly, using purler beads and embroidery thread here, yeah, I probably will be able to see the knots. But when we do our finished one with fire line and seed beads, we won't. So we've got those nice and tight. Then we're going to go through our three beads again. One, two, three, right out the bottom. And then we grab a pair of scissors and just snip that off as tightly as we can. So we still have to get rid of this tail at the beginning, the one that has our stomp bead. So we're going to take our stomp bead off. Then we're going to re-thread this end and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run it down three beads knot it, knot it, knot it, run it down three more beads. So there you go. Here's your, here's your ring. So that's how you do it. That was to help you see it easily. Now let's try it again and this time we're going to use our beautiful little seed beads. So now we're moving on to our small beads. So we have our colored beads and our gold beads and then we have our one big stop bead. So we're going to start with our stop bead. I'm going to move my beads off to the side here. 
so I don't spill them. But if you do spill your beads, a good way to pick them up is to get a very fine weave fabric. An um, a nylon is ideal. And rubber band that over a hose to your vacuum cleaner. And then you can just suck them up with that covered hose and the nylon will catch all the beads. It's a tip I learned from my sister who does a lot of bead weaving. Okay, so we have our stomp bead done. I wrapped it around three times. Now, this fire line is more slippery, obviously, than the embroider that I was working with. And you'll still be able to move that bead a little bit, maybe, but it's not coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get that into place. So I've got my line coming down. And then I'm going to start again. I'm going to start with a gold bead and then four of the colored ones. And you might notice I'm working on a soft surface here. It's a little bit easier when you're working with beads if you're working on a softer surface or felt or something like that because they don't bounce as much because once they bounce, they're going all over the place. And one more gold bead. I've zoomed in a little bit here, hopefully to make this a little bit easier. So you can see we have our six beads. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four colored beads with a gold on either side. So just like we did the last time, now we're going to pick up another gold bead. And it's going to go right next to the one we have because we're going to then run our needle with no bead through this bead right here. So the first brown or colored bead. And like I said, this first row, if you tape it down, I think it's going to make your life a little bit easier because as you can see, they do like to, to move around a little bit. So we have two gold beads. And we're going to want those right next to each other. So I'm just going to take my needle and push them down just like that. And I'm going to put that single bead right on top of them like that. Then I'm going to pick up a bead and thread it. And it's going to go right next to the next bead, the second brown bead on the first row, and go through the third bead. So you can see these beads unlike the pearler beads, they don't necessarily sit all nice and snugly right next to each other because they are not um, as square as the pearler beads are, but they do it. And the farther you move along, the better this will be. Okay, so we went through this one, so we're going to pick up a brown and thread it. And it's going to go right next to that brown. And then we're going to go through our gold. So that's rows one and two. The first two rows are done. We've come down and gone back up. And the pattern is starting to show itself. Not as easily as it did with those bigger beads, but it's getting there. And it'll be easier to see the farther you go. So we're going to pick up. For our next row down, it's going to start with a gold. So if we go through the gold, we put the gold on, then we're going to want to go through the bead that's sticking out. Pull that all the way through. And you're going to want to go back and make sure that you're pulling that thread as tightly as you can. You want these to be snug. Then we pick up one of the brown beads. It's going to nestle right next to this one right here. So it, we'll just go ahead and thread that one on. As you get farther into this, it's a little bit, and it's easier to see, then you can 
thread these needles on while picking up the next one at the same time. So we go through the next one. And that needle, that bead just snugs right on in there. I'm going to do one more. Get one of these colored beads. And it's going to go through the gold. And I just dab myself in the thumb. So that's the thing. One of the things about bead weaving needles is that they're sharp. So be careful. Don't stab yourself because as with so many of the needles that we use, they will draw blood. So now we've done down, up, and down again. And we're going to keep going. So we're going to pick up a gold. We always start our rows with a gold. And it's going to go through that first bead that's sticking out. nice and tight. Pick up a brown, go through the next bead that's sticking out. So it's the third bead. Again, every other bead. Every other bead. Now this time is going to take you through the gold. So you can see how that is building nicely. We've got our pattern going. It's easy to see which beads our needle has to go through and which beads are going to get another bead just sitting right next to them. So we're going to keep on going like this until this is approximately the length I want. Then I'm going to show you how to size your ring. Here's how I determine how um, far I need to weave my beads to get my ring size. I take a piece of tape, and this is just a painter's mass tape. I tore it long ways just to make it a little bit easier to manipulate around my finger. And then with the non-sticky side facing my finger, I'm just going to wrap it around and tape it on there. Okay. Then when I slide it off, I can see exactly where I need to mark and where I'll learn to cut right at the point where they overlap. And that is how long my weaving needs to be for my ring to fit. So this is one that I had done earlier for my friend April. And this is the bead weaving that I've been doing. So if I lay that on top of there, you'll see it is pretty much perfect. Now, I could probably, it's maybe one row longer than I would want, but I had to add that row so that my two ends will mesh together nicely like we did with the pergler beads. So you'll have to adjust a row or two maybe to make those ends fit together, but if you get close to the length of your tape, you'll be, you'll be good. And we're back to our extreme close-up. So I've woven all along there, and how beautiful is that? These beads are so nice because they're very uniform in size. So it makes a really nice, smooth weave. And now I'm going to put my ends together. So uh, on the top here, this one sticks out. This is a sticky-outy bead, and this is a recessed one. This one is recessed, this one's a sticky-outy, as I like to think of them. And so you know those are going to fit together. So I'm going to wrap it around. And I'm going to go through this gold bead, which is a sticky outy bead. Oops, dropped my needle. Go through the gold bead. And pull those ends together. Then I'm going to zigzag back over to the other side. And you're just going to zigzag back and forth, alternating rows. And your beads that stick out in the pattern will match up with the beads that are recessed in the pattern. And the whole thing will just 
snug together nice and tight. Again, if you need to see this better, you might be better off rewinding to where we did it with the purdler beads. So we've got those all tied together. I'm going to go back through our very first bead. This bead has the thread coming out the top that has the stop bead attached to it. I'm going to go back down through that and I'm going to go diagonally through two more beads. And pull that nice and snug. And then I'm going to go underneath the threads here. And I try to get just one, but if I get two, that's okay. And I'm just going to tie knots and pull them nice and tight so that thread goes down in between the beads. I'm going to do it again. Pick up a thread. Bring it around. Run back to your loop. Tie a nice knot in there. I'm going to do one more. Oops. Go underneath. And you can see here, this is where the flexibility of your needle comes in handy to get through into those tight spaces. Okay, so I've tied three knots. Now I'm going to go through these bottom rows diagonally one, two, three and out the bottom. And then I'm just going to pull it tight, get my, my scissors right up against there and snip it. Fire wire is tough. Fire line is tough. So you're going to want good scissors. So we took the stop bead off and we threaded that beginning end. Now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to go down through three beads, work our needle through there. So we're picking up a thread, tying a knot that's going to get buried down among those beads. Picking up another thread, tying a knot bearing it down among those beads. You can't even see them. Then we're going to do one more. Picking it up, tying that, bearing it down there. Then I'm going to go run down through three more beads. So that's two. If you can get your needle to bend the way you need it to bend without stabbing yourself. You know what? Let me show you this. You can do it one bead at a time. One. Two. Three. Okay. Then we're going to get our scissors in there. Pull that nice and tight. Get our Good scissors in there, give it a snap. And there you go. This ring is kind of, well, actually that does fit. My friend April and I must have the same size fingers. So there's our beautiful ring. Now you'll notice even though these all have the same pattern, the same peyote stitch, the same number of rows, they're slightly different. This one's a little bit wider. Um, this one I did obviously in stripes. So you can do designs with your peyote stitch. You can use beads. These ones, these beads are so nice. They're so smooth. They're uniform. It makes for a smoother weave than some of these other ones, but you can have a lot of fun with it. 
and um, there's no end to the number of colors and designs that you can make. Um, seed beads are readily available any place where you get your crafting supplies, so you might want to consider picking up some and trying it on your own. We do have a few titles in the library that address bead weaving. I found them really helpful when I was preparing for this tutorial. So there is a small bibliography available on the written instructions and we encourage you to check it out. Uh, share what you've done with us through our social media. We'd love to see what you've done with your take-home workshop.